In the past few years, newspapers, radio, and television stations have chronicled an invasion of North Dakota's rivers, streams, and lakes. Words like Eurasian water milfoil, curly leaf pondweed, zebra mussels, and silver carp jumped from printed pages or television screens to alert anyone who cares about the outdoors in North Dakota, and with good reason. I'm Tom Jensen with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Our state has a wealth of fishing lakes like Devil's Lake here, and thousands upon thousands of shallow wetlands that are part of some of the best waterfowl production habitat in North America. For thousands of years, periodic dry cycles were about the only threat to North Dakota's waters. In times of drought, rivers ran low and lakes dried out. When water was plentiful, rivers ran high and prairie potholes teemed with ducks. Starting in 1993, North Dakota entered one of those wet cycles that benefited not only waterfowl but fishing opportunities as well. All across the state, receding or dry lake basins filled with water. Fish populations flourished. The number of lakes Game and Fish was managing went from about 170 to over 400. But whether water levels are high or low, aquatic nuisance species, plants and animals that don't belong, are putting our waters at risk. Some aquatic nuisance species are already here, others are just a state or two away. Probably the most well-known ANS in North Dakota and the upper Midwest is the common carp, introduced by European immigrants well over a century ago. These invaders live in many of the state's lakes and rivers, and they take up space that could be used by walleyes, northern pike, and other desirable game fish. The new aquatic nuisance species have the potential to cause serious damage also. ANS crowd out native species and can plug up our waterways. The nice thing about ANS, if there is a nice thing, is that humans can make a difference. We can stop the advance of these exotic plants and animals by not giving them a ride to another destination. For instance, the simple task of properly disposing of leftover bait, rather than dumping them in the water, can ensure that a hidden small carp, sucker, or other unwanted fish doesn't get transferred from bait bucket into the lake. Anglers and other boaters are likely the leading cause for moving ANS from one body of water to another. Only one plant fragment or seed or small fish or eggs catching a ride on a boat or trailer is all it takes to ruin a lake or river. Check the motor for plant fragments and look carefully for weeds on the trailer. A handful of lakes and reservoirs in our state have curly leaf pondweed or Eurasian water milfoil. We don't want it traveling elsewhere. Drain your live well and bilge at the ramp so water from one lake is not transferred to another. That's likely how zebra mussels found their way from the Great Lakes to the heart of Minnesota's lake country. Personal watercraft and fishing tackle have the same potential. Check the trailer, underside, and don't forget the water intake hidden under the craft. Waterfowl hunters, don't forget to do your part. Check your duck decoys the same as a fishing boat and make sure to clean all the plant fragments from your decoys when you sack them up for the day. That is now the law in North Dakota. You need more than one hand to keep track of the aquatic plants and animals that are a threat to North Dakota waters. Let's take a look at some that are either already here or just waiting for an opening. Curly leaf pondweed hit the Missouri River system in the mid-1990s and has adapted well. In fact, it even thrives in North Dakota's harshest winters. Curly leaf pondweed is an interesting plant in North Dakota because it grows very well in colder conditions than most of our native plants, and so it does very well in, sp in spring and on into the fall, especially like Garrison Tail Race, it's very abundant in the fall, and it actually lives through the winter as well. It also grows in deeper water than most vegetation, which makes it even harder to kill. The unique thing about curly leaf pondweed is it can grow in very deep water, so in 10 or 15 feet of water, most of our native aquatic vegetation won't reach to the surface, but curly leaf pondweed will, and it grows uh, extremely long stems It comes to the surface. And so in that regard, it's a hard one to get rid of because you can draw the water down five or six or eight feet, get rid of most aquatic vegetation, freeze it out, but with curly leaf, it roots far deeper than that, so it's a tough one to get rid of. 
When the plant dies, it breaks into fragments which can be carried to other parts of a body of water and take root. Sometimes these plant fragments attach themselves to boat props or trailers and are even carried to other lakes and rivers. Chemical treatments like herbicides have worked on curly leaf pondweed on a temporary basis. Keeping it out of your lake in the first place is a much better option. Eurasian water milfoil is an exotic plant that grows into thick mats on a lake's surface. It hampers fishing, boating, and swimming, and provides excess escape cover for small fish so predators cannot feed on them. When water milfoil gets in a lake, the result is a weed-choked water body with mostly small fish. This exotic plant crowds out desirable native plants and upsets nature's balance. Milfoil reproduces by seeds, stem fragments, and root runners, and it only takes one small fragment to take root in a new location and start a new infestation. Zebra mussels are native to the Caspian Sea area in Asia and apparently hitched a ride across the Atlantic Ocean in the bilge water of cargo ships. They found a new home in North America's Great Lakes and have been established there since the late 1980s. Adult zebra mussels are about a quarter inch to one inch long. They congregate on hard surfaces such as rocks, boat hulls, and other structures in clusters of many thousands per square yard. They're notorious for clogging underwater pipes for municipal water plants. They can clog water systems of power plants and water treatment facilities as well as irrigation systems. They can also severely reduce or eliminate native mussel species. Zebra mussels feed on plankton, the same plankton small game fish need to survive. An adult female zebra mussel can produce as many as one million eggs per year that hatch into free-swimming larvae that can easily be transported by boat or bait bucket. Silver carp, along with bighead, grass, and black carp are collectively known as Asian carp. Originally imported to the United States in the early 1970s to remove algae from private aquaculture ponds, they escaped to the Mississippi River drainage in the 1980s. Silver carp feed on plankton and compete directly for food with small game fish and even large native species like paddlefish. In addition, they have the unsettling habit of leaping several feet out of the water at the sound of a boat, which, as funny as it may sound, puts boaters at risk of collisions with flying carp. Even though there are scattered instances of curly leaf pondweed spread throughout the state and scattered spotting of silver carp in the James River, aquatic nuisance species cannot be characterized as common in North Dakota. And if we continue to be diligent in our efforts to combat ANS, follow the rules and regulations that are designed to prevent their spread, we can continue to enjoy North Dakota's beautiful lakes and rivers.